she kind of freaked out and hid in the corner. Come on, girls. I will admit, I'm a little worried. Lately, a lot of folks have been wondering about whatever happened to the two barn cats we have on our farm. Hey, buddy boy. Ow, Pablo. And I'm not talking about Pablo barn cat. I'm talking about Molly and Ginny barn cat, the two new barn cats we added to our farm about a month ago. And I've had them living inside a room inside our barn. I haven't shown either of them in a video in a while. There are a lot of viewers wondering why I haven't shown them and why I haven't set them loose around the farm. And there is a very good reason for that. And it doesn't even have anything to do with Pablo barn cat and why he keeps trying to chomp on my arm. And I'm gonna try to explain it in today's video. But first, release the Quacken! <laughs> now I gotta let out my second duck flop here. Out you go, guys. So there's the moms with the babies. And I just recently moved my runner ducks, who were living in that shed, into here. I'm having them live with the mom ducks right now because it's like the next step to integrating them in, into my broader duck flock. When you're doing something like this, it's important to do it in stages. Out you go, little runner ducks. Come on. Uh-oh, this hen's got a secret. What you hiding there, girl? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I just saw her munching on like a mouse carcass. <laughs> and now the reason I had to move my runner ducks out of the brooder house is... Just the other day I took the baby chicks that were actually living inside my barn and I brought them outside and brought them into here, inside this brooder shed. The brooder shed is gonna give these baby chicks a whole lot more room to grow and thrive and play. And also for me as the farmer, it's much easier to maintain a bunch of birds inside a space like this than it was to try to raise them inside the milk cooler room. There you go, Blanche. You can eat the scraps from the babies. And then the other nice thing about having them in the brooder shed is that during the day, they can go outside and play and scratch and peck in this yard. And then even as they get just a little bit bigger, I can double the size of the yard out to there where the chain link fence is. So my ethical chicken experiment continues onward. So yeah, it was about four weeks ago that we got Molly Barncat and Ginny Barncat on our farm. They were a mother-daughter duo. They were staying with a friend of ours and she was able to rehome most of the kittens that Molly the Mama Barn Cat had. And we ended up adopting both Molly and one of the babies who we eventually named Ginevra or Little Jin Jin as I was prone to calling her. And the way you train a new barn cat on your farm is you usually find a protected room where you keep them in for a couple of weeks, giving them a chance to adapt to the climate, giving them a chance to understand that your farm is their home. Usually after about three weeks, you let that cat out and they just end up roaming your farm and protecting your farm from rodents. And so by all calendar rights, like a week or a week and a half ago, I should have let Molly and Ginny out and be free. But I didn't because something happened. So one of the things that I believe very strongly is that if you're gonna own outdoor cats, it's your responsibility as the owner to get them fixed. So neutering the males and spading the females. And since Molly Barncat had just had a litter of kittens, I really wanted to make sure she didn't get pregnant immediately thereafter. Those rapid successions of pregnancies can be really health risk for a cat. And last week, as I was gearing up to let Molly Barncat into the world, I noticed something awkward and uncomfortable. She started going into heat, which for those of you who aren't familiar with the reproduction cycles of a cat, 
it's this time when the female cat is fertile. She releases pheromones and exhibits certain behaviors that are trying to attract male cats to impregnate them. Now, officially speaking, there is only one male cat on our farm, and that is Pablo Barncat. And Pablo Barncat has been long since neutered. I'm talking years and years ago. Please don't cut my testicles. He wasn't a risk for getting Molly Barncat pregnant. But the pheromones that a female cat in heat can release can be detected for miles and miles around. And so as Molly Barncat was starting to go into heat, I realized that last week was not gonna be the time to release her into the wild because we still hadn't gotten her spayed and we were still waiting on an appointment with our vet to actually have the surgery done to her. And so I decided to play it very conservatively and just keep her and Ginny Barncat inside to avoid any unwanted pregnancies. And that's where this story takes a turn because it turns out my suspicions and my cautions were very well founded because over the last week or so, I have noticed another cat show up on our farm and he has been stalking the barn and looking incredibly interested in what's going on inside our barn. This cat is not our cat. I don't know this cat. I've never seen this cat around our farm. And for those of you who might be wondering, this cat is also not Hobo Cat the barn cat who took up residence in our barn over this past winter. He is an entirely separate, different cat who is unrelated to any of the cats that we have. I do not know who the owner is, but ever since Molly Barncat went into heat, he's been all about our farm. The amount of times that I run into you in this place is like out of a romantic comedy. Now, luckily a cat going into heat is a temporary situation. And in the past few days, Molly's heat cycle has subsided. And it's also been a couple of days since I've seen that rogue Tomcat. But Molly and Ginny Barncat remain living in our barn for a different reason. <laughs> Pablo, get out of here. Get out of here, man. Nobody's in the jeep. Come on, Toby Dog. Here you go, buddy. So Toby's dog food is always chicken free. And the reason for that is, is because I don't want to turn my chickens into accidental cannibals. <laughs> now yesterday morning, I had to undertake a little bit of a project. And so I did my best to fight Ginny Barncat and Molly Barncat into cat carriers, which they were not happy about whatsoever. And I took them to my local vet's office. Ginny Barncat was gonna get some updates on her vaccinations, and Molly Barncat was gonna undergo a little bit of surgery to get spayed. It's okay. We have a short 15 minute ride and I'll take you to the vets. You girls scratched me up something fierce. That does not feel good at all. Even with the gloves, they did a number on me. I know girls, the great injustice of it all. I am so sorry I've had to do this, but this is like a step towards your freedom. Oh, I know it's tough girls, but I'm just gonna continue to sip coffee out of my wonderful Goldshaw Farm coffee mug, available down below. The barn cats can't believe that I'm actually using this as an opportunity to shill merch. I'm sorry there, little Jin Jin. Maybe someday you'll have merch of your own. Roland handed the glasses over without a murmur. His battle with court, as though he were a dream or a moonbeam. Come on, girls. Sit tight there, Molly Mal. Almost there. They do not want to be here today. Uh -oh. See you later, girls. We'll see you in a bit. You're in good hands. Yeah, so you are gonna just hang out. I will admit, I'm a little worried. Not that I think anything bad's gonna happen. I don't know. It's just. You know, when they're feeling so sad like that and you drop them off, you know, you feel like they probably hate you right now. That's always tough, but I know this is for the best for both of them and eventually they're gonna be very happy about this. I just gotta give it a little time. You know, none of our animals love going to the vet. Pablo hates going to the vet and he cries like you've just kicked him out of the family anytime you put him in the cat carrier. Because of all of her past trauma, Lil Barn Cat is never a fan of it either. And Toby Dog, even though he's very good natured, gets high anxiety and just drools everywhere every time you take him to the vet. So I just took Toby Dog to the vet. 
He did really well, but he's been really nervous and panting a lot. So much so, I don't even know if you can see all that. <laughs> but oh my gosh, I still have scratches on my hand from yesterday trying to fight Molly into the cat carrier. It was not good at all. And unfortunately, we only have one cat carrier. So I had to bring little Ginny Barn Cat inside of a have a heart trap, which the reception at my vet's office was appropriately horrified by. Now, some of you might be wondering, was I getting Ginny fixed as well? And the answer is no, she's not ready to be fixed. Usually you want to wait like four or five months before you actually get the surgery done. And Ginny is like right at the, I think like three month mark. And so I think it's important to let her develop a little bit more before I do it, but I will most absolutely do it. Now I took the girls to the vets and then I went out to town and ran some errands and did some stuff. And when I came back to pick them up, they were not happy at all still. Even though Molly had just gotten out of surgery, she was like fighting tooth and nail. She was unhappy. She was kicking and thrashing. As I was driving them back from the vet, she was fighting. And mind you that my vet had warned me that they had doped her up. And they said that she would be very sedate for the next few days. Which was most definitely not the case. When I got her into the barn and let her out last night, she kind of freaked out and hid in the corner. And it really wasn't until later that evening when I came back in to feed them again, that she sort of settled down and I was able to get her fed and pet her and try to make amends for the trust that I feel like I've broken. You know, I feel like I've spent the past month building a connection and building trust with those two cats. You know, I go in there and spend like an hour a day with them each day, you know, usually sitting on my phone working on stuff, but having them around and petting them and playing with them. And they were really starting to take to me. And now I think that they might hate me. So this morning I'm gonna go back inside and feed them their morning breakfast and let's go check on them and see how they're doing. Morning girls. Hey little Jin Jin. Hey Molly girl. How are you doing sweetie? She's really shy right now. And Ginny is full of so much energy she's like fighting with her mom kinda. I gotta make sure she doesn't pick on her. You want some treats? Here, we're gonna give you guys treats. Here, Jenny gets a treat. Molly, you want a treat? Yeah. Oh, Molly's purring. She's doing so much better. I was really worried that I was gonna come in here this morning and they both were gonna hate me. But it seems like Molly here is recovering. Ow, <laughs> Jenny keeps scratching me. You know how like in the Harry Potter books, Jenny Weasley's kind of a tough girl who's like not gonna put up with any guff with anybody. That's pretty much what Ginny Barncat's like too. She is just tough. Mommy, have you seen my jumper? Yes, it was on the cat. Molly is the sweet one. And it seems like she's walking around a little gingerly, but overall she is recovering. Oh, I love you, sweetie. You feeling okay? You're a little sore after your surgery yesterday? It's okay, you're gonna be okay. Yes, Molly girl. You're gonna be okay. And Ginny. What's with this hissing? Why do you keep hissing at your mom? Hey, behave. Did you learn something new at the vet yesterday that you shouldn't be doing? Because you're starting to become a little bit of a bully there, Ginny. Don't make me put a bat bogey hex on you, huh? Hey, be nice to your mom. What's that all about? Hmm? Hey. Be a friendly little kitty, just like your mama. Hey, knock that off. Ginny, you go play in the corner, huh? So now my plan is that these cats are gonna stay here in the barn for about seven to 10 days. The recommendation from the vet was, you know, not to let them do too much jumping or climbing and be too active. I mean, Ginny can be as active as she wants to be, but I'll probably leave her in here with her mom. Molly just needs time to recuperate and I wanna make sure she fully recuperates because, you know, unlike like a regular house cat who, you know, doesn't have nearly as many risks, there's a lot of risk when you have a barn cat in terms of their safety. And so I wanna make sure she's 100% before I let her go out. And so yeah, that is what's happening here on the farm. Molly is recovering, Ginny is going crazy, and life's pretty much back to normal here at Goldshaw Farm. If you guys are curious about the story of Lil Barncat though, I will uh, leave a playlist right up here and you can learn all about it.